Welcome to the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County meeting on Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? I move to pursue the general provisions of Article 3-305, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County, for the Board of Met in closed session to discuss, appoint, appointment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consider matters directly related to negotiation strategies or the contents of this contract, public discussion or disclosure would adversely impact the ability of the public body to place in the competitive bidding or proposed process. Thank you, I have, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to go into closed session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it, the motion is carried. We'll see you at six o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Strait. Thank you and good evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting on Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. Can we stand to do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Good evening. We have uh, housekeeping items approval of the agenda can do i have a motion to amend the agenda as presented to include 11.0 executive closed session and 12.0 to be the adjournment i have a motion so moved i have a second second any questions or comments on the motion hearing none i call for the vote to amend the current agenda to 11.0 executive closed session 12.0 adjournment all those in favor say aye aye Opposed say no, the ayes have it, the motion is carried. Do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second, any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to approve the amended agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no, the ayes have it, the motion is carried. Approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to accept the open and closed meeting minutes for May 6th and May 12th? So moved. I'm sorry, I apologize. May 20th. 20th. Thank you. So moved. Motion. I have a second. second. So moved. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the open and closed May 6th and May 20th meeting minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. <coughs> board staff involvement, student board member. We okay. welcome back. Hello. Ms. Uh, Shannon. It's been a while. It, uh, <laughs> a lot's changed. It's very different, but someone was just telling me that you see anyone who says they're class of 2020 that's an instant connection right there because i think i don't want to speak for other classes but i don't really think any class has seen something like this or been through something like this so this is just kind of amazing how everyone's come together like this uh all that was done so we could celebrate with each other the parade was amazing it was a community event so i think that was nice the slideshow which was fun because you could sit and comment with your friends and just like it was nice just talking about all the memories we shared while watching like everyone you've been in school with for 12 years go by in front of your face and then all of our separate graduations which i just had mine today and that was amazing there was obviously a lot of work put in it's just amazing and it's just been a long ride and being here right now and knowing we've done it is one of the best feelings ever you know so did you watch the virtual yeah i watched the virtual was that good that was fun it was fun because you could watch it and like real graduation you obviously can't talk through it but being able to talk with your friends while it's going through texting them while it's going across the screen seeing all your friends and meet, knowing you can cheer for them right there is and rewind nice and see it again. Yeah, rewind and see it again, <laughs> knowing it's always going to be there. That's, That's true. Really nice. That's true. Do you want to go ahead and give it to her? Um, absolutely. So, Ms. Shannon, oh. on behalf of the board and exec team, and I don't have my mask on, so I'm going to. Hey. I wish I could give you a hug, but virtual. Virtual. Yeah, yeah. Here, go. here you go. This is the big hug. Here's, you. here's your hug. proud of you and we thank you. You have been insightful. You've asked good questions. You've shared what's going on in your school and have just been available for everybody. Thank we are you. proud of you 
We want to hear from you. Yeah. Yes. What in the world is going on? Did you say where you were going to go? To yeah, school? Williams okay. College. All right, very yeah. good. Massachusetts. Sure heard that. And we're looking forward to good reports. All Thank right. you. Congratulations. Thank you. You're That's welcome. Right. Well done. Thank you. Very nice. You don't have to stay, love. That's that's our oh, gift to okay. you. You don't have to stay. Oh, send, say hi to mom and dad for us. Okay. I want, okay. We all want luck. to say thank you. You were an asset to this board. Uh, I know your father. I'll be seeing him, so I'll, yeah. keep, I'll keep up what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, and thank you for everything you've done for us. All right, sweetheart. Bye. Take good Best. care. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she's so sweet. On her senior trip, her senior week, right? Is that what they're doing next? So, uh, looks different other, now. And, and just to theirs. just to report that um, Skylar was not able to be here tonight to receive all of her accolades. She is doing uh, senior things <laughs> right now, so Great. she wasn't able to be here. But we are so grateful to have had her and her insightfulness as well, yes. and her participation on this board. And uh, was she was also quite an asset. So we thank her for that. Had some wonderful students that have sat on this board over mm -hmm. the years. We have. So we're very blessed. Did you want to add anything to um, board involvement as far as well, you just, and Mr. Pluski? I, I do, I do. I'm going to give the great news first. And so you know that this year we set a goal to have 100% of our schools as green schools. And we found out on Monday that we met that goal. So in Queen Anne's Yay. County, all of our schools are certified green schools. That's awesome. So congratulations to our schools. We had some fabulous teams out in the school buildings working to make sure that the application was complete and that they were working with the partners and ensuring that everything was done. It was quite an effort and, you know, the work sort of continued early into the first week that we were out for the school closure, That for, exactly that first week. So they continued to do what they needed to do and they pulled it off and pulled it together. So we just are so excited. I cannot say enough about how proud we are of our schools. That was a big deal for us. And Mr. Page, his leadership and, and the principals and all of the teams, our partners, we did it. So we're just very, very proud of them. Uh, also last week, Mr. Page joined me. I was part of a uh, environmental education summit. So we did a virtual summit online. We had uh, Frederick County joined us, Caroline County, um, Calvert County joined us. And I think I'm missing somebody. Um, of course, we were there. I apologize. We had MSDE, the environmental education specialist from MSDE was there and lots and lots of our partners. Shore Rivers was there. There. Of course, Mayo, uh, Maryland Outdoor Education was there and several other partners. And we are really um, excited about planning outdoor environmental activities and lessons that students can do when they learn at home. So things they can do in their backyard, in their community, and our partners are coming together to work with us on getting some of those resources together as well. So we're excited about that. And hopefully we will be able to plan a canoeing trip that we had to postpone for our partners and um, neighborhood <coughs> districts in October. So we're looking forward to that if we're able to do it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mr. Pluski, did you have anything to add? Hey man, we've just been playing. <laughs> Getting ready. Tiger teams, tiger teams, tiger teams. Summer and the next school year. Oh, yeah, a lot going on. Thank you so much. Um, 4.01, citizen participation, public comment. Mrs. Wright, did we have anything? Nothing has come in. To okay. I had one gentleman who asked me, who e emailed and asked a question. I apologize, I didn't have it up. Um, First, how, where could he go to do public <coughs> comment? And I hope that he... He didn't send anything. He didn't send anything? Okay. Oh, just asking about when schools were going to open in the fall. Um, oh, that right. That's yes, correct. He, he didn't know where to send the public comment, so he sent it to me. He was asking, what's the, you know, what's the scuttlebutt on whether we were going to have school in the fall? Because they might know. Well, we have never talked about anything other than opening schools on time. So at this point, there is no other direction from the state about not opening schools on time. So we're assuming that we will, unless, of course, something happens and we get some other direction. So we are planning. Now, what that looks like, if that'll be all students, some students, that's what our Tiger teams are working on right now, a recovery plan. But right now, we do expect that we will open 
on time in the fall. And will we have enough cleaning products? That's <laughs> yeah, yeah and, you I know, right. will the students have to wear masks? That's I mean, right. these are all the questions all that parents are going to ask. This How many students ask. can ride on a bus? How many, How many students can, can be in a classroom? classroom? Will students have to eat lunch in the classroom? Can they move about in the building? All of those will things there be, will, mm -hmm. will there be the cafeteria used at all? Correct. Or will there be an option for families that don't want to send their kids back? Correct. And um, all of those things are, are being considered and, and their questions. We've been working with superintendents have been working with MSDE, Dr. Salmon, on some parameters, some non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. So all districts have some similarities. Everybody's not gonna look exactly the same, but if there's some direction on how many students can fit on a bus with 54 seats or, or you know that kind of thing, per square foot, how many students can be in a classroom, those kinds of things. Who gives the directive if there is an outbreak, heaven forbid, who closes down a school? Is it MSDE or is it the health department? Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of questions that we're trying to work through right now. Okay. All right. Did you have something else, Mr. Pelusky? Okay. All right. Uh, and since we have nothing else, we'll move on to presentations, Virtual Learning Academy update. Welcome, Ms. Dubois. For the Good record, evening. for the record, we have Susan Dubois, Susan Grace Dubois, who is our Virtual Learning Academy facilitator, um, who is going to present with Mr. Paluski, the Deputy Superintendent, on our virtual learning Paluski. program. Thank you. We thank both of you. <laughs> right. um, good evening, good evening, President Hopper, Dr. Kane, board members. I am very excited to be here and to talk to you about, about the innovation that Queen Anne County Public School has been doing with the Virtual Learning Academy. Um, who would have known that at the beginning of last year we would be where we are today? So it is good to be on the front of innovation. Mr. Pelosi. So we just wanted to provide you with a very high level overview uh, of our pilot year. Uh, of our virtual learning program, uh, which Ms. Dubois has led uh, seamlessly, has done an outstanding job. So we're gonna give you uh, a little bit of an update uh, of where we are. We're also gonna provide to you a recommendation uh, of a vendor uh, as we continue into next year, which will also be part of an action item. We wanna be able to provide you with a lot of information ahead of time, and then to discuss uh, our action items really and next steps. In the program. Thank you, sir. Um, so, as you know, Queen Anne's County Public School was the first in the state of Maryland to offer a fully virtual online school, online virtual program. Um, there are a hundred reasons why it is um, appropriate at our current level, and really a great innovative thing that we have started. Uh, the position was funded last year in June. Uh, I was hired in July of 2019. Uh, we focused on homeschool parents last year and we targeted groups to have face-to-face -face meetings to discuss with them a program that we could offer them with curriculum that matched Queen Anne's County Public School curriculum and got um, them teachers virtually in their school rooms, in their homes to help them pace through um, a homeschool program. Uh, our background, as you all know, uh, we, our start date was delayed by MSDE approval. Uh, we originally had 21 students, K through eight. We selected K-12 for our pilot. Um, we did not get approval from MSDE until October 15th, so we did miss our September 30th count for students. We are not expecting that to be an issue this year. Um, we did have five students withdraw almost immediately because of the late start date um, they had already enrolled in other homeschool programs and the curriculum for K-12 was so rigorous that they just couldn't keep up with the pace every day. This is um, beautiful grids if you want to know where our kids are currently coming from, uh, how many students we have from each school and in what grade levels they are currently in. You can see that we have larger numbers in the middle school grades, but that we have had a very good sampling of 
almost every single grade represented first, second, third. The only grade we don't have represented is seventh. So the instructional delivery of the VLA, um, each child is taught by a Maryland certified teacher online. Uh, the pilot program has online and offline components because you would not want your first grader or your second grader to need to do five hours of their education online. So that parent is an integral part of that unit. They are there to go, okay, let's look at page five. Let's read it together. Let's see what the teacher wants us to do. Um, all of the materials are mailed directly home to the student. So they got computers, they got books, um, anything else that they needed to do scientific experiments. Some of them got sand, some of them got dirt, some of them got, it's true. <laughs> it's like some of them got scales, it, it just depends. Um, each new concept is taught in multiple modalities. Uh, and that's so we can reach every child where they learn. Because we all know that some children can read it and understand it, but some children need to do and manipulate and learn by touching. So that's one of the things that I really do like about all of the programs that actually uh, applied later for the RFP. Um, K through five teachers, they hold virtual mastery checks with their students. So if your assignment this week was to learn your numbers one through 30, they make sure that when they check into you, you guys review that. I have a specific child who was, um, had a reading hesitance at the beginning of the year. So we purposely focused on that uh, teacher working with him on getting his reading skills up to where he felt comfortable and to more on to level. And that has been her focus in her mastery checks along with the other things, but she has really helped him become confident as a reader. Um, and he was a homeschool student beforehand and he just needed a little extra support in that area. Um, six through eight, their mastery is shown on project-based assignments or unit testing, just like most of our middle school children. Um, live lessons are offered daily from our current provider, but they might not be your child's teacher. So there will be a math class every day, but it might not be specific to your class because there's a lot of moving parts. And a portfolio of work is submitted by each child every quarter. Um, we currently have 16 students uh, enrolled. Uh, overall, I would say our K through five students have been very successful. And I do believe that is because just like our elementary school classrooms, they have one teacher in charge of that entire learning process. So when you are struggling in science, that person is, has a quicker moment to catch that and see that. Our six through eight students, just like our middle school students, they imagine it like changing classes, just like we do in, in middle school. They have six different teachers. And so that, that transition was hard for some of them especially in the classroom online. And so we have discovered, and later you'll see uh, implementation we're gonna put into place for sixth through eighth grade students to help support them. But they were the ones who, when we started this, I thought they'd be the easiest ones. Get online, do your work, it's all right there. But they had more time, uh, more struggle with self-motivation. Um, to monitor performance, we have many, many, many tools, but uh, some of the main things that we look at is login time, login time that they're on, engagement time, because you can also record, I was reading my English novel for two hours. Just because you're on the computer doesn't mean that's your only engagement time. Uh, reports from teachers and parents and grades. Um, we currently have 10 students who are more than 80% done with all of their uh, grade level work while six students are still in progress to at least get to that point. Um, as was actually discussed last week by Ms. Morissette, parent engagement, I do believe, is the single best predictor of success in the VLA. We all know that we have now transitioned our children to needing support from home, mm -hmm. and some of our parents can, can do that, and some of our parents don't have the time or don't have the means, but. I would say that it is the single most 
predictive success in the VLA. Whew, the lessons we've learned, we have learned. Um, the VLA is definitely meeting a local need. I get calls every week pre-pandemic of people trying to join the VLA. We did not allow extra people to join this year. It was our pilot, it was set. We had a set number with MSDE, but I get calls weekly. I get calls weekly from students from other counties trying to join the VLA. Um, we had training for our parents and our students. That's a question, how yes, does that yes, work? How did they find out that we offered this? Word um, of mouth? It, it was definitely word of mouth. It wasn't that we put it out there. It would be somebody said to somebody or I looked it up on your website. They are looking for virtual programs. Are we allowing people to do that, students? Are, have we? Okay. No, not from no. outside of our county. Okay. But how about inside the questions you, requests that you could not fulfill? Their students that are currently being homeschooled or were they currently in our own school system? It's a mix. Okay. This year we couldn't, this current pilot year we couldn't add in because we had data that we had to provide for MSDE going forward that will be a possibility. If there's some student who needs to be added in, we would be able to do that. There's a system in place for that. But we did and not allow that after the, September 30th this year. Were they all homeschooled, the ones that you got in this program? In this year, the 16? Yes. Majority are? Yes. Oh, she all, said all. All, all. Oh, all. Okay, all. great. Yes. And, and Dr. Kane, back to your answer. Only Queen Anne's County, I know you've been asked to other people since we're a pilot program, but only students from Queen Anne's County because last year I understand we did not get our state money because we missed, or not missed, with the state requirements we did not make the September rollout. This year we will, but when we're subsidized by county dollars for our students, it should only be offered to Queen Anne's County residents and Queen Anne's County people. That is correct, and, and what Ms. DeBois is probably going to touch on a little bit later is that the state is um, investigating whether or not they should uh, start an online school. Uh, we had conversation with superintendents last week, week before, for a couple of weeks now, and um, they are considering whether or not, so the superintendent said, no, we'll take care of our own. Um, and now the conversation today was about perhaps regional um, programs. So some legislation would have to happen and so that we could, you know, move about, parents could move about between counties and, and that kind of thing and enroll in perhaps a, a regional school. That is the tip of a conversation, nothing okay. in stone or, or any of that. Because the um, devil's in the details on that one. Well, and who's going to pay for it? That's gonna, the devil in the right. details. Well, we know what, you know, happened with the CTE um, issue, but that was a little bit different because that was in a physical space. This is online. Um, so lots of conversation will be. Sorry. Here. It's interesting okay. because this is sounds, we're in the middle of that now, yes. the online learning. And so what yours being a real organized program is obviously more successful, I think, than what we've been doing. But to well, give you some small. lessons from that, for fall is the key and what you know the six I mean you have a great great idea of things that work <clears throat> and we've been working on that and our target teams I have okay been that's, supporting and addressing our, the, that's some awesome. of the issues yes yeah. that's great and that's going to be so helpful for us very helpful especially if we have to go back into <laughs> this sometime in the future correct uh, um, sorry well, I'm, it's okay uh, lessons that we did learn again we are definitely meeting needs as I said, phone calls, emails. Actually, quite literally last week, talked to a nun who wanted to start a program at her private school. <laughs> so I was just like, well, hello, Sister Mary. It was just a random phone call. Um, our, uh, when we get down this, we're going to assign an academic coach from the vendor for students for six through eight to help support that time management piece. As I said, with six different classes, they took the classes that they liked or the teachers that they liked or, and they did those and they focused on those and they didn't realize that they hadn't done enough English or had done enough math. So part of our new <coughs> plan is to make sure that they have a person who checks in with them just kind of like your homeroom teacher in elementary school who does a touch in base with the parent and the student every week that says, here's how we're gonna make sure, hey, you're, you haven't done enough science, let's talk about it, what, what can I help you with? 
Um, they are going to provide synchronous learning, which, as you know, is live learning. Asynchronous is what um, virtual learning programs mostly do. I can log on at 3 in the morning and do my program, and it is there teaching me lessons, but there are always live components that we want teachers to, to participate in. And so um, synchronous lessons are going to be delivered a minimum of two times a week. Um, we really have found that that helps the students. It helps them engage. It helps them... Um, feel attached. It helps them get their answers, que their questions answered. Um, even though there's 24-hour Zoom meetings with anybody they want, talking to their own teacher is is what they want to do. So we're going to facilitate that also. Uh, yes, ma'am. Would you tell me again what that means? Synchronous. Synchronous. Yes, yeah, synchronous is what we're doing right now, live, like together. We are doing it on a Zoom meeting. If I had you and me and the children in a classroom. Uh, asynchronous would be I recorded myself and I have put it up for you to watch whenever you want. Okay. So that's what's delivered twice a week? Synchronous learning will be delivered twice a week. Oh, asynchronous okay. is all the time. They can get okay. on there. That's their program. Okay. Thank you. All the time. But synchronous, where they're going to have one-on-one -on -one with a teacher twice a week, that actually may go up. We're still seeing how many we get enrolled and things like that, depending on grade bands, because they will go if we have four, four third graders, those four third graders will be in the same class and they will get the same teacher teaching the same lesson. Are you finding that, obviously, logically, that is more successful for the kids or not? Because um, I know in what we've just experienced, some of the kids don't show up on the, because the teachers don't like to do the Zooms because they end up with five kids and they're, they were expecting 20. So. Uh, but are you finding it because it's an organized program that more are participating? Um, it really does depend on the students. Some students do not care to see their teacher. They don't need it. I'll just do my work and I'll turn it in. And some students need that interaction. We are going it's not a to requirement then. We are going to in our next uh, set of programming require it. Okay. Um, it right now it's offered, and it's offered every day by a teacher in a subject in their grade level, but in our next year, we're going to require it. That may end up our, our fall pro plan, because I think there's, we may end up having to use that if we end up going online for the fall, we, because. We, we're in planning mode uh, to lessons. ensure. Yes, we have uh, been discussing. We, we've learned some lessons as well. Yeah, got it, thank you. Well, and falling in line with online college classes. Correct. You've got some live, but you're required to respond to a blog every week by a certain time to prove that you're still doing your asynchronous learning. You're involved. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, we are going to hold quarterly parent and uh, teacher conferences uh, with myself and with the teachers. This was planned this year, but a lot of parents didn't find it useful, so <laughs> they didn't follow through with that. And so I think that that would be better useful in our time. <coughs> uh, we definitely need the ability to enroll more students. I cannot tell you the number of phone calls that the homeschool office is getting or the emails that I'm getting right now about what does our program look like? Can you please tell me about it? So uh, the number one thing that I do want to say, which again, great innovation on Queen Anne's County Public School um, part, is that none of my kids' education was disrupted by this pandemic. They all called me that next day on March 16th and said, do we have to go to school today? <laughs> I did. And I said, yes. <laughs> Nothing has changed for you. Get on to your classes. They all really didn't want to, but, but there, was no, there was no disruption to their education. And that's something that in both of our ways that we're going to offer education in the fall, we're going to have to make some universal plans for that. But it is one of the things that the VLA did get to offer to our students. The Edmonton, Mr. Pluski, that we adopted at the last meeting. Edmonton, yes. Ed Why can't I say that word? <laughs> yes. Anyway, the Calvert learning, was that wasn't include the packet that we assigned. Not included. It's not included. So that's another, it's another contract we're going to have? Yes. OK. okay. Another that different. Is here. It, we're we're going to walk through the process okay. uh, of selecting the vendor and then present to you the vendor okay. and cost 
Okay. And then you have the contract within the action items. How's well, this? How's this to be used in the future? Like, were some classes or uh, grades more conducive to teaching online than others? I would suppose the younger group would be hard to deal with. But what about seniors, uh, high school people? Do well, you find them easy to train over the internet? Ultimately, that'd be a very good question because right now we are currently in that mode right now. But ultimately, our plan is to go to high school. And I do think that those children, the children who this program would be appealing to, would be successful at that. Because when you have a kid, you say, hey, this is your work, get it done. It doesn't matter if you get it done in three hours or six hours, just get it done and you're done. Like that would have totally worked for me. I never would have walked into a building again. I just would have been like, what do I have to do? Great, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm golden. I would have picked up the phone when I didn't understand a math question. And then I would have done all my work in two days and I would have gone about my teenage life. I'm sure at the time I thought it was very important, but. <laughs> so but, what, what is our plan going forward since we've been an experiment that seems to have worked? Yep, we're, we're, we're gonna share that right with you. That. We're going to share over the next three years what that's going to look like, Mr. Yes. Anderson. You're ready for the next slide, please. Okay. Um, so for our planning for our next current school year, um, we did put out an RFP uh, of process and recommendations. The bid went out in January on the 20th, and we asked them back on February 24th. We had three vendors apply, and it was evaluated by five central office staff. All three were evaluated each by five central office staff members. What was the RFP for? The RFP was for a vendor to be our provider for the Virtual Learning Academy. So we have to purchase someone to run that program on their side. This is an operating or capital expense? This would be an operating expense. That, this would be an operating expense that has been budgeted. It's not in the budget right now, is it? Yes, sir. It is in the budget. Okay. So our recommendations from our RFP after five central office staff and uh, uh, the team looked it over, is our recommendation is that we go with Calvert Learning by Edmentum Ed Options. Calvert Learning itself has been a homeschool program here in the state of Maryland for over 100 years. Uh, it was recently purchased by Edmentum because it did have a very good uh, vetting process and they wanted to move and expand into the K through five uh, region. And so that's what, uh, why they purchased them. Um, Edmentum has agreed to meet all of our Comar accessibility requirements from MSDE. Uh, that has been an issue with all purchases from MSDE electronic, whether we purchase them for our students or we purchase them for our staff, we have to meet uh, WCAG 2.1. And so they have already got that plan in place for their six through 12 classes. And they are working with MSDE to get that plan in place for their K through five classes currently. Uh, as we look forward, Edmentum itself already has 126 approved high school courses. So when we want to expand the VLA to high school, it will be less of a lift because we already have these approved courses that are approved by MSDE and all of their pro, uh, courses are also approved by the NCAA. So for our student athletes who are going to use this program because they need to be working on other things, it would qualify for all of that. How are they graded? Uh, how, how is this graded? It is graded from the in-program certified teacher. So that it's like uh, 75 is a C, 100 is an A. Correct, like, just okay. like our exact program, yes. <clears throat> um, this is a lot of uh, Comar regulation. I'm going to summarize it for you. Um, <laughs> there are requirements to be public schools in the state of Maryland, as you all know, because you deal with it every month. Um, it's one of the reasons that we have such a great educational system here in the state of Maryland, because they really do make sure that they have put in the requirements, some of which include environmental li uh, literacy, um, uh, some Help. oral health, some financial literacy that we have to have, um, and specific classes that are needed for a Maryland certified student. So, when we wrote the RFP, 
we asked every single vendor who applied if they were willing to create these uh, classes for us. And um, Edmentum agreed to create all of these classes for us. One of the reasons that we made this recommendation because these are things that we must do for MSDE and now they will all be built into our own program. Uh, our enrollment procedures for 2021 uh, current VLA students and their siblings. I say that because I have some young ones coming up and I also have some, I have a fantastic <coughs> fourth grader right now who has had other siblings in public school and her mother may want to have all of her children do the VLA this year. So just like if we were doing a French immersion program or a, a program where we were learning another language, if you have one sibling in, we will allow you to have all of your siblings in because it's easier on the parents. Um, we will then offer it up to residents of Queen Anne's County and tip the iceberg, like Dr. Kane said, there might be an opportunity to offer it up to others right now. We don't know what that looks like. So the estimated cost of a full year program complete with teachers, books, workbooks, everything that is needed per child is $4,075. That includes a computer, um, that includes um, all of their physical needs and their online certified teacher doing synchronous learning. Suppose they already have a computer. But all of our kids are supposedly have one. We, su we supply it. We're already paying for that. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. No, it, it, you said something about each student has uh, provided, gets provided a computer. Yes. All, all our students have one. That is correct. We are working on our full-time uh, technology plan here. Um, in this program, Edmentum would buy a Chromebook for our students if they didn't have one, and then at the end of the year, they would become part of our inventory. inventory. So. Basically, they're going to make sure that everyone does have one, which is an issue right now because they're hard to get. And at the end of the year, we keep them. So it's not a lease, we just get them. Well, I just want to make sure you, uh, that we don't need to buy new Chromebooks. We already have Chromebooks and all the students have them. Yep. Well, that but is true, but uh, many awesome. of these students weren't public school students. So these students who might be coming in so you have non-public school students on the same program in the same virtual classroom as public school? No, once they join the VLA, they become part of our public school students. But why don't we have extra Chromebooks uh, that we could, instead of having Edmentum go out and buy them, don't we have any that we could? Well, this, again, this would be an, an increase in enrollment. Um, so with that, we do have loaners uh, that all of our schools have. So we do have some inventory. We want to talk about 16. Well, we were talking I think about we're talking this about for our yeah, pilot. I think we we're talking you'll, you'll, increase. You'll see some enrollment numbers here. Yeah, I think we're talking at least double that. I mean, yes, I, 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 maybe I didn't understand the program in the beginning. Uh, okay, but I'm starting to learn it now. You're you, or is this your company? You have a company. She 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 works for us. She's she's our employee. Oh, you're our employee. I am. Yes. Nice to meet you. She's, she's been <laughs> here this almost is, this a This is the virtual program that we piloted this year. Right, I And understand. remember, we got funds from the commissioners to make sure that we hired a facilitator and get those, get, and so Ms. Dubois is the person that we hired. Right. I, I was thinking that we were paying for a company to do this. And yes. We, we and are yes. doing that. And now we will be. All right. Okay. All right. I see. Why did, I just don't so think I had, ever met you. That's why. Well, I'm happy to meet you, but glad, I'm glad yeah. to get So you are you. setting this whole thing up. Correct. That's what I, you're doing. And you had a pilot that you were working with for a while with a f only a few kids. Correct. And it was under development. Mm -hmm. And now it's firm and we need a company. I'm trying to say this for the parents. So, so we, we need a company to go ahead and start doing the actual courses and the whole program. And you're facilitating that to she, she is, and we had, uh, we had a different vendor. We have currently have one vendor, which is K-12, which is the vendor that, that we're piloting currently. And then as we went out for the process, and you'll see uh, that in a minute actually through the action item, and then we've chose a different provider platform. Uh, 
for the reasons that, that Ms. Dubois uh, had mentioned uh, and where they're meeting the needs that, that we need, such as that last slide. We need some specific courses, financial literacy. Um, other companies weren't willing to be able to do that. So those were some of the, the key pieces of, of the committee's decision making. But actually, if you had the 16 and it was only 4,000 each, that's, that's cheaper than what, 64,000 isn't, that's not very much. So, I mean, it's a it's good correct. price, it's, I think. I mean, I don't know what price that, That's actually correct. It's one of the reasons why actual having a virtual learning program is helpful in general, in that we can provide curriculum and meet a need for parents who either need their child to stay home. I have a child right now who, um, even before pandemic, he was immune compromised. And so his mother's like, I can't send him. And so this was an opportunity for her and she was thrilled. And now she definitely can't send him. And so she has a way that she can keep up with his schooling and he's loving it and it's been great for him. So this cost is less money because parents do it at home and they have more support that way. But on that long term, we end up with some money more in our budget because we get paid per pupil. Extra student, yeah, right. I can just Based that on part. your experience, thank you. How many current students that come to classrooms would elect to be virtual students? 10 that I, 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 ten percent. I don't have an answer. My for guess that. is the senior class is probably going to be much higher. I don't have an answer for that because there are some people who believe that uh, I'm going to do the virtual program and being online is going to be way fast. I only need to do it 45 minutes a day, but it is a solid five hours a day. Whether you're in front of your computer or doing your work, it is a school day's worth of work. So people who um, understand that it's a school day's worth of work but I can do it at 6 a.m. or I could do it at 2 p.m. That's, that's the people who love the program. Uh, but what's missing is the high school experience, the friends and so forth. So there's gives and takes. And we don't have high school grades right now. Right now we are K-8. So K this year has been our pilot year for mm -hmm. grades K through eight. Next year we're also proposing grades K through eight as we move forward and we're able to, you know, work with our vendors to develop those courses, then we'll move into those credit bearing courses for high school. It's a real opportunity here. It, it absolutely is. It's an, it's an opportunity for us to, again, we've, we've talked about this for the last three years, uh, to meet the needs of some families who prefer to have their children learn at home, even pre-COVID-19. And it is also an opportunity for the school district to earn some revenue. Uh, indeed. And it's also an opportunity to shrink classroom sizes a little bit well maybe. so there's a little there's a little you know caveat i would like to say with that we are not looking to uh lose the current students that we that we have that. um but that but this COVID 19 has created a dynamic in which there are families who are wrestling seriously with i don't even if schools open up i don't want to send my child back to school mm -hmm. um for whatever reason some families are saying until we have a vaccine um so you know, we want to create, we want to poise, be poised to create an opportunity for families um, to have that fully online experience um, and, and us not lose them well, as some, students. Some of the uh, kids actually work to support the family income. This, and this is would true. work for true. them. This is true. So how does that work? I mean, they still have their five hour days of school. They still have five hour days, but their five hour days start whenever they want them to start. So That's like, true there are live lessons with your teacher, but let's say you can't do your synchronous lesson at three in the afternoon because you're at school. Because it's an individualized program, you say, Ms. Harper, I can't do three, three o'clock. And she says, well, what other time do you have? Let's look at the calendar. And they pick a different time. So, so more it's more flexibility. individualized on that, more flexibility, yes. And they're in the comfort of their own home if that's what they're choosing to, Correct. Where they choose to be. Correct. Like this um, COVID thing is gonna be definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, and that is something as we move forward that we really have to consider. You know, there will be parents who, no matter what, will be unwilling for a while to send us their children, so. 
to the buildings. You know, I think this is a great option, and I, you know, it has a lot of merit, especially in this day. But also, there's also parents that aren't home that can't do this for their children. You That's know? true. So, you know, some both parents are working; they don't have this opportunity um, that do this. Um, I think there's some social ramifications when people are distanced from other people. I think you learn a lot in school besides just A and B. You also learn some social skills. I think it's a great thing, but I think it's limited in now if this COVID-19 stays the way it is, it might be more, but it's also limited into some things that are for the best interest of everybody too. And one, one shoe doesn't fit all. I think it's a, 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 a certainly a nice thing to do for certain people, but it's not it's not for education. everybody. Every, no. every child does not learn best in this manner. No. We're finding that out right now. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> How are we approaching these students? Maybe different now because they're all homeschooled. But how about when we expand the program? Are they going to be eligible for sports? This, this program, was we didn't do sports or anything like that with this program. That's certainly something that we'll continue to talk about as we move into the high school grades. This is mm -hmm. K through 8 now. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing that everybody's got to pay attention, when you keep saying K-12, that's a company's name. K-12 is the There's nothing to do with K-12 right now, grade-wise. It's K-8. Correct. And we're getting a new vendor to this. And I think you go to a whole different level when you go out of middle school into high school with different activities. That is correct. That is correct. But on so we're gonna our next year, right. still in grades K through eight, here's our estimated cost with the vendor that um, the team would like to recommend, which is Calvert Learning by Adventum. Uh, 30 students, $124,000. We have budgeted 160. We will definitely have more than 30 students want to enroll in the program. So that's something that the board will need to discuss. <laughs> 40 students as it, it just goes up exponentially, same price. The price doesn't change per year per student. That is our price for the next three years with this company per student. I have a um, question. Yes. Does this program provide any instruction for special needs students who may in the fall have a concern of not coming back to a physical building? Well, that is an area with MSTE that we work on all the time. It depends on what needs that they have for what kind of accommodations you have and what kind of accommodations you need. The program has built in automatic accommodations that are um, easy to apply, less uh, questions, less types of questions, less um, options in the ABC range, uh, more time, extended things. But if a child needs, say, information chunked in a certain way, that would not be built into an asynchronous learning style. That would be something that we'd have to t start talking with the teacher to go, in your two synchronous learnings, can you focus on his asynchronous, can you focus on his reading chunking of the text for that week? Okay. It is something that they are trained to do, but it is not something that's, some kids thrive at that and some kids don't. And then the next concern is equity about affordability. You've got kids who would thrive in this environment but can't afford this tuition. What are we doing for those kids? Well, this program is free. free. Oh. Yeah, and so, and that was one of the draws because we do have families in Queen Anne's County who are purchasing online mm -hmm. learning programs, you know, have their kids oh, okay. in online schools that they pay a tuition for. Because we are a public school system, this is free for parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So how about this cost? It says here of the physical books, workbooks, professional development and computers who covers the cost of that we do no that's all included in your four thousand seventy five dollars per student everything we need for an entire year's program is covered in the four thousand seven with this admentum correct what is what, what are we currently paying um hmm. what is the program currently we are using is k-12 correct correct and uh, what is I, the current we have that not on this uh, slide i think it's on our yellow sheet. I think we currently play a little bit above that, closer to like $5,000. Yeah, about 47, 48. 47, 48. Which is actually in the, in the uh, cost proposal for the action item. I believe they're the old second or the last, the last vendor, one, yeah. um, which is actually a higher cost per, per pupil. But we're not 
Okay. So we is this had in the, the budget that we're talking about now? I mean, we're going to have to decide whether we can afford it or not, or is it in the budget? It, it is currently in the budget, in the operating budget. It is in the operating budget. Already been approved, yes. So we have. It hasn't really been bought through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Already a line item. So uh, my question is for, I guess, for Mr. Fister, are we, can we estimate that the amount of money we're actually <coughs> going, when we have another pupil, how that's going to be offset? <coughs> Oh, okay. Right okay. So this is in working with Mr. Fister to answer your question, okay. uh, Captain Kelly, which is a good question. So uh, since the the um, this is a, a public school program, so it's estimated. Remember that in year one we did not make um, the uh, September 30th enrollment deadline. So with this upcoming year, having 30 students enrolled to meet that. Um, that will go into the following year. So what we're projected at in FY22, because we're, remember, we're, we're always going to be somewhat of a year behind because we missed that delay in the beginning. So, and, and Mr. Fister can jump into this too, that it is projected at state aid at 8,132 students, or $32. Again, that per pupil funding uh, is subject to change that with 40 students, we would project a, our, our revenue increase would be um, 243,960. And then each year that we would increase that, again, the next year, 50,000 students, again, um, 50 students. 50 students, excuse me, um, then 325,000. And uh, of course that number will increase with the number of increased students that we have enrolled. Is this subsidized? Uh, you know, we're paying right now so much per student and this is the same? Only the money is transferring from us to the, the contractor? I mean, how's the money working? So I believe Mr. Fisher can certainly jumped into that. Once we have um, the enrollment numbers and those get verified, then now we start going into uh, maintenance of effort based upon you know that funding. So our contract would just be like any other contract that we bring forward. We would bring that to the board. That would be approved. That money would be given to uh, the vendor. But again, it's based on per pupil um, expenditure, which is how the pricing works. So we, so we are allocated a per pupil allocation, so dollars for every student. Part of the dollars for every student in this program go to pay the vendor. Right. And so, and then the rest stays with the district. We're increasing enrollment. We earn a, a revenue. Okay. Families get their online But service. I guess the one question, and there's a lot of questions I'm going to have as we go forward. I like the program and it looks good. For John later on, when I see $8,100, 8132 that's not state aid, that's state and county, I'm assuming. State aid. State's gonna give us 8,000. Yes, per every, for every student, our current and our current state aid that we receive is $8,132. That's what the note there is, that's our current per pupil funding. From the state? From the state. What's the county give us? Uh, 7,000. So, yeah. so we're paying $15,000 a student? We're receiving, we're, we're getting revenue on. $15,000 a student. This program is only costing us four. But for illustration purposes, we only put the state aid cost on here. I, I, I could be wrong. I thought our cost per pupil was regular $9,000. Mm -mm. No. It's 15? No. Oh, 78. 77. Isn't it seven, like 77? It's about 8,000, yeah, for the students um, from the state. And then there's the additional from local. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pull up a document. Did we answer your question, Mr. Anderson? Oh, yes. Okay. So this particular year that we didn't have our September 30th <coughs> number, it's costing us about 260000 or whatever. What's it costing us? I believe right now we have a budget about 158000 uh, Somewhere around Correct. there. Okay. Is, is, about 158,000 is what we have budgeted currently in FY20. I thought that was for. That's that's for the her position. I'm sorry, I'm confused. No, no, no. This is the 158 is for what we're getting ready to talk about, right? Correct. Yes. But in and, okay. and Mr. Fisher, correct me if I'm wrong. But in in this budget we're in right now, FY20, uh, the board approved that last year to put uh, funding Mr. Waugh's position 
and $158,000 for to pay K-12, the current vendor, to run the current pilot. And then we're projected at the next budget in FY21 at $158,000. Um, but you're going to see here just shortly that that uh, the current vendor is going to come under that number. Um, so there could possibly be an area to increase enrollment um, if the money is there to be able to do that. Uh, but that's currently what we have uh, budgeted in FY21 that you have that we have not finalized yet. Okay. 158. Yeah. As I was trying to find that earlier. And, and I think it's on, Mr. Fister put it on, if I'm not mistaken, the long sheet um, that has the categories. I believe it, it is in there as an, as an item. On the sheet we have the other one. Yeah, the long-term long goal was not to get extra money. The long-term goal is what? How are we doing? To well, provide that learning opportunity for, for families. Um, and it's at no cost for them. But at the same time, the district does earn a revenue. Down the road. Once, once those students are a part of the, the enrollment. Enrollment program, enrollment and, count. Okay. But I can foresee there's a number of people that are paying considerable amounts of money to private schools that will pay less or nothing by coming and doing this. They could do that. Um, and also some families that were doing homeschooling, um, you know, don't necessarily want to teach their children all day. And this is a program that is turnkey. It was ready-made, right. the courses were already done, the teacher's there, yeah. so it's a lot less. Now, the family certainly does, somebody has to support that student, but they are not creating the lessons and, and all of those kinds of things. So this is a positive outcome of our ability to recognize virtual training and teaching. Correct. Dr. Kane, we have about 9,000 students in our system. 78. 78. The only, it's, I don't want to, you're, you're going to do a great presentation. When I take a hundred million dollars, 105 million, which is our budget, and divide it by 78, I come up with some different numbers than. Because you can't include pre-K. Pre right. So. I asked that at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's about 250 pre-K students. Yeah. Which we, it's, it's mandated, but of course no money attached. Anyway, any other questions for Mr. Bob? I don't want to keep her any longer. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming. Thank you so much, Mr. Bob. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice, yes, to, see all nice of you. to meet you. Mrs. Morissette, would you mind grabbing those wipes that are sitting there? We need to. Oh, yeah. Do you have gloves? Okay. I was like, I'm on it already. Look. Comes the health department. <laughs> Is it really? Okay. Yeah. A little COVID -ness. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's okay. the last two. Is that what you're There's saying? like two left in here. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Dubois. Well, so, would you all mind if we took a 10 minute break? We've been here since 4 30. Would everybody mind? Is that all right, Mr. Jeff? Okay, we're going to take a 10 minute break. We'll be back here about 7 10. Thank you all very much. Thank you. When we're back, Mr. Uh, Fister is going to tell us about our FY 2021 budget update. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, President Thank you. Harper. Dr. Kane, board members. Uh, last time when we gave uh, an operating budget update, uh, we didn't have any capital um, information there for you. I know there were some uh, questions from the board members. So we just uh, basically have taken the opportunity tonight just to kind of focus on the capital budget. And I'll just go briefly through that. Um, Mr. Pinder and, and Ms. Polin are here. Uh, if you have any questions or something that I perhaps can't answer for you. So again, just wanted to give you a brief little update on uh, the commissioner's budget, uh, what's proposed in their current state. Uh, there were some changes from the last time you saw these numbers uh, through our normal update process. So uh, if you recall in your capital budget, it started, at, uh, it started out at like $12.2 million, too much $12.3 million was your capital request over to the county. And when the county administrator proposed his budget, it was reduced to 7.2 million. And now it's sitting at about 6.7 million. Uh, the central office planning and design money of $2 million was um, and has remained um, zero taken out of the both of those requests however all the systemic projects that require state matching are, are fully funded the uh, exterior windows the chiller the fire alarm and the partial roof replacement at ken allen high school 
Uh, these next slides, I've kind of broke it up where what your request was is in the first column, what the administra county administrator's budget was in the second, and then finally the county commissioner's proposed budget in the third. Uh, strike throughs, of course, mean they've been changed. If it's yellow, uh, it is a change from the last time you saw this number. Um, and then if it's just clear, um, then there's been no change at all. So the comprehensive building assessment, which has a myriad of, of different projects within it, uh, the original cost was $1.7 million. It's now sitting in an $804,000 request with the uh, commissioners. Does that include the assessment of this building? Remember, we took that, that was, out? That was cut. Okay, all right, thank you. The feasibility study. Yeah, the current assessment is building is funded with the current dollars, but the, going forward, that was cut as evidenced here by the $2 million of the planning and design dollars. As far as uh, some of the miscellaneous stuff, the athletics, it started out with 272000 and it is currently being recommended at a $97,000 budget. Technology classrooms remain the same at $100,000. Uh, custodial equipment, originally we requested 123. The county administrator cut that to zero. Uh, the commissioners have restored $48,000 um, of that funding going forward. Fleet vehicle replacement, originally, yes, ma'am. The money they restored, is that with their budget, or was it some CARES money they got? You know, they got a it, this is coming out of their capital budget, so I wouldn't believe it would be CARES money. Just their money. It's just their capital budget. Thank you. Um, but there, there's other cuts to make up for it in here. So, oh. um, Fleet vehicle replacement stayed the same between the two versions, 99000 uh, They did cut food service equipment of 157000 to replace some old and antiquated and sorely needed food service equipment. So that budget now is sitting at zero. Let and me just ask you a question on the food service. Some of that's refrigeration. Yes. Yes something goes up it just it's not there well I mean, we could lose thousands of dollars of food and then not have kids eating we have yes that's why i don't know why you put it in there but i just want to make sure we all understand county too that if we don't have this and we have freezers and refrigeration units go up in some of our schools besides the dollars we lose in food we have no way to keep the full food cold the next day to feed kids if they're in school. <coughs> um, if only that, they don't have the same uh, refrigerant that goes into them. Right, that FR. Is that mm -hmm. what, what does the PM reports every month on the stuff report that some one compressor is about ready to die or we're having extraordinary maintenance costs to keep the things running? I mean, these are the kinds of things that determine uh, for especially food pres preservation, that's the kind of information that would be needed to convince somebody, hey, we need to replace this piece of equipment. We have that information. We ha I have one person that's just dedicated to kitchen equipment and refrigeration. Oh. And okay, and what does it say about this piece of equipment that we're not getting money to replace? <laughs> it's what it says is, is we have to replace it. I mean, like Sid just said, that, that I forget what it's R19 or R12 or whatever. That Freon, whatever, yeah, it is, you can't put it in anymore. Yeah, a lot of it they don't make anymore, or it's very, very expensive to get. I mean, once you get a, we get a jug of that, we can have it locked down I mean, because it's very expensive. And it's an environmental issue, isn't it, That's at that point? Correct. You have to have a recovery of it. So there is only one piece of equipment or two on, with the 157,000? Oh, no, we, we have several pieces of equipment. Um, we have double oven at Queen Anne's County High School. It's been there for over 30 some years. Um, we have some equipment at uh, Centerville Middle School that's been there uh, since the school was built. I mean, we're, we're not just looking at items that okay. are currently not working. We're looking at ones that, hey, we know based upon the work on them that their life expectancy is about done. Right. Um, I would say of the 157,000, you would have um, probably about eight to nine pieces of equipment that we could replace. Okay. okay. Thank you. What's uh, our game plan if by some unfortunate thing, what you tell us comes true and we do not have a refrigerator, do not have an oven, then what do we do? That's a good question. We're just gonna have to revamp probably part of the comprehensive building assessment part. You know, I mean, we have to have the refrigerator. That's what I mean. We have to have it. So you get the money from the roof. You don't replace the whole roof. That's state, that's part with, I, I just, you know, I mean, look, I'm, we're, we're it's in tight times, but we, I mean, we just, there's some of this stuff that we might have to look at other places to take it from. Correct. 
Uh, the furniture replacement original request was 274,000. That is now down to zero. It's to help with not only chairs, uh, we probably have chairs and tables, especially cafeteria tables that are old as some of the schools, uh, the original equipment there. Um, and that again is also a safety hazard with those chairs being open and closed every day. Um, they, they just wear out and they're beyond repair of the 15 or 20 times they've probably been repaired already. So that's, uh, that's an item that's sorely needed as well. Uh, maintenance equipment replacement on original quest of 63.4, that still stays funded as zero, along with some missile, small miscellaneous projects, along with the PA intercom. Um, the phone system replacement that did make it into the county administrator's budget of $149,000 has now been funded at zero. Playground equipment still at zero. Portable upgrades originally requested at 226 has remained constantly funded at $126,000. And that phone system is a part of safety? Yes. Is that one school at 126? Two yeah, schools? We have two schools. Okay, thank you. Is there any federal money? I know you get grants all the time from different things. Is there any federal money can be allocated to that? For the third school that we are replacing, we did uh, uh, get some money from uh, aging schools from the IAC. Right. So we were able, we've got quite a few grants and awarded different uh, funding sources to make up for some of this. You know, obviously, we can't make up for all of it. Right. So we're able to get that one, the third school off the plate. Can the telephone system get in under that, that grant? No. Okay. The, and the, it can't go under the CARES Act, even though it's for no. safety? No. Okay, I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah no, it's a good question. No. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Secur no. Security upgrades, there was a $60,000 reduction that still remains in uh, with a $300,000 funding level there. Transportation for buses and cameras, $502,000. The technology plan, uh, year three of year five, uh, is funded short by $200,000. We may have to have some decisions made there. And What is that affecting, that $200,000 loss on the third technology here. Well, we have existing contracts with our laptops and our Chromebooks, and then there are just some other infrastructure. Mr. Combs could certainly speak to that, but I'm certain there's some other infrastructure type network servers and switches and things like that that are in that plan that may have to be delayed because of this $200,000 cut. But we have existing contracts with several vendors that spell out every year what we have to pay because we lease um, right. Right. the, the laptops at the high school level. We, so some of the extras no can't what. be purchased at this time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. One, one point four, I think, was bare minimum, and that even included, if you recall, a little bit of carryover that we had in a yes. prior year. Yes. So now we find two hundred thousand dollars for that somehow. I know things are everything's tight, but this is goes to my idea of not using budget surplus for reoccurring costs, and this would be good items to use if we had budget surplus. And well, and honestly, in the technology plan, that's really a return a recurring cost as well. That is, but yeah, it, it, but it's in capital. Yeah, but some of this other, you know, with, with, with ovens and stuff. And when we start using our budget surplus to fund the operating budget, it, it ties our hands on something like this. This is a little different because they sell a bond and the bond has this component in it. I don't know how you can use something that a bond was sold for. I'm not, I'm not talking about the county. I'm talking about our money that we have surplus Oh, we should right. have a rainy fund, day fund, fund. So you're and that's what it tapped into one-time cost, not to reoccurring cost. Well, we have the, I need to use the fund balance to save jobs. Well, we'll see. Okay. And then uh, textbooks originally request was $675,000, so Mr. Paluski and his group will have to revamp that uh, rollout adoption plan uh, only being funded at 475000 So again, as I led into, we started out with a $12.2 million request. It was cut to 7.2, and now we're sitting just over $6.7 million. What exactly is not being done in security by having $60,000 dropped out? Something, you know, that makes me very sensitive when it comes to health and safety. What is now not going to be done because $60,000 is missing from that request? Our focus now on security is the interior door locks of the classrooms, uh, putting a secondary locking device in there because most of our classrooms now, you have to go outside, stick a key in the door to lock it when there's a, an intruder or a active shooter assailant in the building. So, so how many do we get done or don't get done as a result. There's probably going to be two schools that we don't get done. Two won't get done. That's correct. Out of, uh, and but we have a lot within spot. our budget. 
Uh, okay, yes. out of 12. Hopefully we'll stay in our budget. No, 15. Yes. And to your point, Mr. Anson, that's also, if we do not get funded this amount, when the Maryland Center for Safe uh, Schools comes out, we do apply for those grants to try to make up for that part there. So, okay. We've been pretty lucky in that part. Okay. Yeah. And that's all I have. Any other questions or comments on the capital budget request? Thank you, Mr. Okay. Mr. Very Thank much. You. Thank Appreciate you, it. Professor. Okay, uh, next up is our current action items. Twenty. The human resource report and substitute bus driver um, report. Do I have a motion to accept the human resources and substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session? So moved. I have a second. 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 I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comment on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the human resources and substitute bus driver report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. No. Anybody abstaining? Aye. The motion is carried. Thank you. Textbook adoption for public review. Spark inclusive physical education K through 12. Madam President, is recommended. Uh, Superintendent recommends action item 7.02, the adoption of the Spark uh, inclusive physical education to go out for public review. We'll take Mr. Smith's um, suggestion from the last time we did it with Ortex. We'll make sure after today that you approve that, that we'll put that out uh, on our website. Uh, Mr. Page has already uh, has a variety of links. Um, this is for K through 12, uh, for our phys physical education um, program. Currently at the high school level, um, there are no primary resources. So um, we have primary and we have secondary resources. So those primary resources provide curricular, curricular support for the teacher, uh, supplemental uh, or additional enhancement. So later on, when I bring some of the other uh, core programs, we're talking about primary. Uh, also to note that the state of Maryland is changing our physical education standards. Um, so this will be a tremendous support for our physical education uh, teachers and we just recommend that it goes out for review uh, for public comment and then we'll bring that to you uh, by the next board meeting. This says $82,000 or is that, no, I apologize, 8279 And that, okay. that, yes, that's correct. Okay. That's for uh, just physical it, education. That's correct. Okay. Uh, that's part of our capital um, uh, budget for this year. Uh, as one of our priority areas. If you remember all the way back from the curriculum audit, we've been trying to play catch up uh, of much needed instructional materials for areas that have not had materials at all or not been upgraded for years. So right. we wanted to move this up on a priority list. So it's capital money from the year we're in this, at this moment. In, in FY20, that, that's correct, Captain Kelly. <clears throat> so this isn't a hard copy. Is this a hard copy text? Uh, no, it's actually, yeah. What is it? it is, I don't, I don't understand it. So, um, the, the, the resources for the secondary folks are, are virtual resources, um, for, again, these are for, these are teacher materials. Um, and then at the K-5, there's some more, um, binders, if you will, more hard, um, copies that those teachers will receive, um, uh, but they'll also receive licenses, um, to be able to provide the suite of instructional materials for PE. So and we'll they don't make have sure. any, you're saying they don't have any? They just do what they learned? No, what the, at the secondary level, they use open educational resources, uh, which is basically just seeing what's out there on the internet. The, the difficulty to that is, is that often uh, those resources aren't aligned to Maryland standards. Um, and so part of our alignment process is to make sure that the resources we're putting in the hands of teachers uh, are aligned to those standards in which they're required to teach. Do they, do they have curriculum that they, they, they because we, we write the curriculum? We, we, do, have a, we do have a, a, a rough skeleton, I would say. Um, we do, uh, but we don't have a primary resource that they use. Uh, so this would be a significant enhancement um, to our PE program. Any other questions? Anybody? All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, contracts for approval. I see Ms. Pullen is still here. 
I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. There, go ahead. An action does not have to be an action item that is. Oh, I apologize. Go, you are very right. Thank you, sir. So we need to send this out for a uh, first public read review. for public review. Yep. Um, and let me get back on that. We're just sending it out for a first read. I don't have to read about where it's all from. Okay. No, so do I have a motion to accept uh, to send out for first read the Spark Inclusive Physical Education K through 12 textbook? Do I have a motion? Moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to send out for first read the Spark Inclusive Physical Education K through 12 textbook. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Polinsky. I appreciate that. These yellow pages get me. I start seeing these yellow pages and I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you for waiting. I appreciate that. Did we have any more? Cleaners for the desk. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, President Harper, members of the board, and Dr. Kane. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much. So, uh, to start off our action agenda items. So I have a motion to accept the chiller replacement at Kent Island High School, approve of the contract with Omnia Partners Cooperative, fiscal impact of uh, $1,350 coming from budget source of FY 2019 state one, capital. One, excuse me, correction. one million. Oh, one I million. apologize. One million three hundred fifty thousand dollars Thank you. FY 2019 state capital funding, 671000 FY 219 capital uh, funding of $679,000. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? Ms. Pullen, you're up. Thank yeah. you. Good. We have to do that now. So thank Good you. Good evening. For thank the record, for patience. Carla you Pullen. Thought, you thought you were going to go sit down again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the record, uh, my name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. The request this evening is to replace the chiller at Ken Island High School. And just to give you a very quick background on where we've been with this and where we hope to go. The chiller there is original to the building, which was built in 1998, currently utilizes 15 ice holding tanks along with a cooling tower. And that helps to chill the water that goes through the building to provide our air conditioning. The typical lifespan is 25 years. We are currently at 23. Uh, by the time this is installed, we're anticipating we'll be at the 24 year mark. So some of this is preventative measures to make sure that we are replacing this chiller um, before it's no longer usable. Okay. We've not seen optimal performance from this unit. We had a facility assessment done in 2016 and the replacement was recommended within the next five years. So again, we'll be at, at that 24 year mark when this unit is installed. It's required some atypical maintenance recently, uh, a startup board, operation board, and it's logging over 56,000 starts, which tells us that we need to question the efficiency of the unit right now as well. We looked at three different options when coming to our final request for tonight. Uh, we looked at refurbishment of the existing chiller. We looked at a new chiller with refurbishing the ice holding tanks as well as the cooling tower. And we looked at two new air cooled chillers that basically removed the need for the ice holding tanks and the cooling tower. <coughs> Keep in mind there are 15 ice holding tanks right now behind that school. Uh, in this proposal, it comes in under budget, it's also replacing two of the existing boilers, which are there right now, which will help to improve the efficiency of the entire HVAC system, as well as allowing us to do heating and cooling at the same time. So those days in December when we get a 76 degree day, we'll be able to add some cooling to the building as opposed to having that unit shut down Completely. for the winter. Um, what about the operation cost of this thing runs on, uh, I guess, electricity? So we anticipate, so the uh, new units will be propane 
run. We anticipate that we're going to see a much greater efficiency with the propane. Number one, because it's a high efficiency chiller unit. Both of the two new chillers are high efficiency. We anticipate that they'll operate at at least 93% efficiency. The old chillers, when they were first installed in 1998, the best we could have hoped for was 85% efficiency, and of course we lose that every year. So we know that we're gonna be gaining efficiency with the chillers themselves, but also with the new boilers, which are very high efficiency units as well. Uh, how does that convert to dollars? We are in the process of doing a study. So we have engineering reports that need to be sent to the state for review by the public school construction program. And all of those energy costs as well as full life cycle costs will be included in that information. So when that's complete. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. All right, any other questions, comments on the chiller? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to replace the chiller replacement at Ken Allen High School contract with Boland for the Omni Partners um, replacement. Fiscal impact of $1,350,000. Budget source FY 2019 state capital funding 671,000. FY 2019 capital, ca county capital funding of $679,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Pullman. Uh, I, agenda item, um, do I have a motion for the contract approval for, for board legal services? With, well, hang on, I need to say it. Oh, the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, I have to say the whole thing. That's how we're doing it now. Right. Okay, so contract approval. Do I have a motion to accept the board legal services for Carney, Callahan, Bressler, Bennett, and Schur? Fiscal dollar amount estimated uh, $298,000 from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2025. Uh, FY 2020 operating budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. 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 All those in, well, sorry. Any questions or comments? Discussion? Mr. Pfister. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harper. Uh, just a, a quick update. We went out and did an RFP on, on um, for your request uh, to obtain legal services for the Board of Education. We issued RFP 2020-02. On April 3rd, well, we had three participating companies put in their bids and after the technical evaluation by the evaluation committee and then and the pricing, the committee recommends that exactly as you requested, Carney, Callahan, Bressler, Pennant, and Schur LLP be the successor uh, to this bid. Upon your approval, we will commence um, the services agreements with that and inform the other two uh, firms that they were unsuccessful at this point. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this contract? I would just to note that this is the present legal support. Yes, it is. Okay. okay. And one more thing, this, this is a three-year contract with a... With two one-year renewals. Two one -year renewals. Yes. They could take us through 2025 as Ms. Harper. Correct. Mm -hmm. but, but the caveat is that we could just have it for three. Just for three, yes. Okay. Three and this helped us with budget. Yes. Main, maintaining budget. Okay. So um, no more questions or comments. Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to for the contract approval for legal services with Carney, Kellahan, Bressler, Bennett, and Schur. Fiscal impact estimated at $298,000 from tw July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2025, starting with FY21. Operating budget, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Mr. Mr. Thank you for thank allowing you. Mr. Smith and I to be a part of this. It, Absolutely. it was very enlightening. Thank, thank you. you so much. Absolutely. Contract approval. I do have a motion to accept the Virtual Learning Academy, the Calvert Learning by Edmonton platform program for 2020-2021. Um, fiscal dollar amount $158,080 operating FY 2021 budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, Mr. Waugh. 
Uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, we would like to put forward and recommend the Calvert Learning System for our next year of the VLA program. Uh, they have fulfilled several needs that we need to have um, be, to be compliant with MSDE and to con continue our high level of education that we require here in Queen Anne's County. And was this for how many students? Uh, we are budgeted for 30 or 35. 30 or 35. That's what this 158 covers. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is for a one-year contract? Uh, it is a renewable one-year okay. contract, so the price will not go up for the next three years. So it's, we're doing it for one year, but we have a two, two, three-year option or Correct. two more. So okay. Because, I mean, it sounds something like we want to... Clarify this. So we have to pay $158,000 every single year? No. 38000 So remember from the... the presentation oh, so you. it's it's year to year except the per pupil price will never go up in that three-year period they could go up if we have more people unit but the unit price stays the same that, that's, that's exactly and we're right. guaranteed this we're, we're we're committing for one year they're committing for three if we want to stay with them which that, everything looks good pupil. Got you. Yes. a total of one hundred fifty-eight thousand. well the the for that, three years or? yeah that could vary depending if the student capacity i mean we're assuming we have remember last year we didn't we were too late we only had what 12. we have we have 16, 16. now 16. Yes. and then next year you're hoping well and with this At pandemic at least might 30 have, 35 right. 40. so that could, it could vary but we will then be getting state Revenue. aid it will be part of our enrollment so we'll have more comments to john later i always do but you know it should be a wash where the state starts you know we get to per pupil maintenance of effort revenue but where's the 158,000 going um, maybe just make it real simple so that's that's what we have budgeted so uh in year one um the, the from the presentation you'll notice as well as here um when you look at the actual total estimated cost is 124 at 4075 so we have budgeted 158 this contract is going to be for 124 at the per pupil rate of 4075 now as we expand the program we go from 30 students next year to 40 to 50 that per pupil of 4075 never goes up in that three-year period so as we increase students that price won't go to like 550 in year two or Six thousand, as an example. Just multiplied by the extra students. Yes, ma'am. That, that's right. Okay. That's right. So the one fifty-eight is just a. That that's what we budgeted. Top level. That, that that's what we budgeted. So what that allows us to do is is potentially add more students. Okay. So we it's, could go. From, it's for this vendor. It's for this Edmentum vendor, uh, Calvert Learning vendor. It's for them, at thirty students. So for next year. But remember, I think where you're getting confused is the dollars that the district will realize won't happen until the following year because we have to look at our enrollment for September 30, and that we don't realize until the following fiscal year. Yeah. So we, at July 1st, we hand them 158000 right? Well, it's post-pay. We actually pay per month per, per child that's Over enrolled. Over the course of the year. Oh, so, so we don't actually an estimate 158,000. It's an estimate of what it. Okay. If we fully enroll at 30. Okay. I, I have to ask a question. Could, could we put off this off for a year, seeing that we have such a budget shortfall this year? I, I mean, I have to ask the question. I, I don't think that that would, and I appreciate the question, but I think we'll lose momentum and we might not recoup those families who are um, ready to go. I think that would leave our kids in the pilot in a bit of a lurch as well. And the only th th other thing I heard in our continue. presentation, if I wasn't, if I'm correct, you're also working with our learning, virtual learning as we do today. So what we learn off this program is helping you and maybe give some guidance to our teachers with this COVID-19, you're being able to help some distant learning. So to me, having this and having some staff understand this can float through our system. So we're better off distant learning with our system, with our regular classes right now. I would, I, if I'm not correct, tell me, but I mean, you're adding, you said you're on a Tiger team. Correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm, working, I'm working with all of our 
distance learning. I have a classroom with 160 of our staff members in it. And you're, you're helping them about virtual learning and stuff. Yes. Continuity learning. I mean, to me, that's a, a added plus right there. But this platform is not being used for our correct in classroom students who are correct distance learning right now. And we can't design our own curriculum to do this? I'm not, I'm, I should have asked this during the presentation. She's still, she's still helping our system, I think. We, we don't even have we, a we learning don't even have the capacity. We don't even have a learning. I was about to go. Nor, nor do we have the capacity um, to be able to create this on our own. It, it'd be next to impossible. Okay. So if, if the year goes and it goes good and you have 30 students, so what is it going to cost us next year? I'd have to go back to that, that slide. To the so, presentation. So next year, because of this September, mm -hmm. now we'll get the revenue. So we didn't get it this year, but next year we'll get the revenue with 30 students. So it could be a wash then, what you're saying. So the, not, not the following year we make money because right. we only, it cost us $4,000 per student but we make a minimum of $8,000 per student just from state funding. So not this coming fiscal year, but the fiscal year after that school year. So our estimate was in FY22, if we are enrolling at capacity 40 students, about 40 students, the cost will be 163. So you had the 124,750 for FY21. We increased by 10 students, we said 163. And then for FY23, we increased by 10 students again for a total of about 50, and then we, it would be 203. At that time, we're earning revenue for the students that we have enrolled. It pays for itself, and we earn revenue. Pays for itself. We don't. Yes. Uh, Not to mention, we're the pilot for this in this correct. state. Correct. Okay. And we, we do we have are. several districts that are looking to us um, to help them. Long term investment. You know, get started. Plan. Mm -hmm. This is the future, <laughs> and the given future. that the county commissioners have seen fit to give Chromebooks in the hands of students since I first went on the council. And uh, in the 14, 15 year, we ought to have ways to use them. It's the future. And we've already spent money to get where we are, and we should spend the money in the budget to take the next step. I'm sorry, I just had to bring it up because we are having a shortfall, and I just. Uh, we have a different It opinion. would be, you know. <clears throat> there are ways not to have a shortfall. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, hearing no other com conversation questions, uh, do I have a uh, calling for the vote on the contract approval for the Virtual Learning Academy, Calvert Learning by Edmonton Platform, fiscal dollar amount $158,080, operating FY 2021 budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Swipe it down for you. <laughs> Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept the middle school ELA digital licenses six through eight with, I'm trying to find who the person is, collections. That's a series, yep, for Hoot, Hoot and Mifflin Harcourt. It's a series Harcourt. called Collections for the Fiscal Impact of $38,776 for the Operating FY 2021 budget. Do I have a motion? A point of order. What, uh, can we explain that? That got a little confused. Yes, we do the motion first, and then we have the discussion. Well, I understand that, but what, is, what, what are we voting on? You're getting ready to find out? We, we, uh, oh. we do the motion first. Oh. Then we have the presentation. Oh. So that way we have we the open discussion. Heard about it yet. Yes, right. Well, so okay. this is so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or discussions? Mr. Pelusky. Madam President, uh, the superintendent recommends uh, the contract um, for Hoot and Mifflin Car Har Harcourt. Um, this is our primary resource for our English language arts teachers, students. This is licenses. Um, collections is actually the series. Um, it is a renewal of our current contract. Uh, that we have, uh, but it is, again, our primary source for our teachers. Uh, so it is what they turn to as that resource to instruct. Um, it is a significant support to uh, our curriculum and... Uh, 
So it says a statement here, collections is the primary material for instruction in English and language, art, language arts at the middle school level. These licenses are used to facilitate the instruction of English and language arts in grades six through eight. There's also a component of $800 at, at the cost for professional development. Correct. So it also it helps our teachers. So this has been used before. Yes, we currently, we, we currently have it adopted. It's just to And if it have you seen accrued because of this? Um, I can jump right in there. <laughs> I can tell you that our middle schools are scoring number one, number two, top three generally in the state. Um, we have this curriculum is certainly aligned with our state standards and our teachers are familiar with it. They use it and, and they do quite well with it with the children. And it would be poorly received if it didn't get approved. Extremely. Extremely. It's a lot of help. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the middle school ELA digital licenses six through eight with collections textbooks. Fiscal impact $38,776, uh, FY 2021 budget. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So I'm going to just keep going. 20 miles, just sit there. It's going to keep rolling. Just, well, yeah, now just we're keep going to do going. the elementary version. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the elementary RELA licenses K through five with the wonders textbook? Fiscal impact $85,184.40. Uh, budget, budget source operating cost, operating budget FY 2021. And do I have a motion? So move. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? Mr. Paluski. Again, thank you, Madam President. Uh, again, this is the primary source uh, through K through five. Um, this has been uh, our adoption for the last um, five years. Um, and it is similar to the collections, but at the elementary level, it is the primary resource uh, that directs instruction uh, for our classroom teachers. Questions, comments? So this is the elementary and before was the middle. K through five. Is it good? Opinion. Okay. Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the elementary RELA license K through five with the Wonders textbook, fiscal impact of $85,184.40 coming from the operating budget FY 2021. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. R E L A stem. Yeah. Is that the name of the company? R E L A. Just wondered. R E L A. Reading English language arts. Oh, that's it. So the. But that's not. Just, the, they just. I, yeah. Because the company's okay. No, it's Wonders Textbook Wonders, was the company, okay. but R E L A is reading language, language arts. Language, language, language arts. arts. Thank you. But it's the only Many textbook Wonders that we have that. for that group. Is is what it's called. It's called. But, yeah. Why is that, is that like, like a collection of budget? what they call the product, the textbook. Okay. Sure. Sure. That is a very good question. Why isn't, uh, why aren't the textbooks yeah. in the uh, capital budget rather than our operating? So these are, this is, this is ongoing cost. So the first time we purchase it, we purchase it with capital. Every year after that, it becomes an ongoing operating cost. This is the license, which is why it's reoccurring. Uh, Thank you. Uh, how was that decision made? Or it just happened. Uh, nobody knows. I mean, that's a significant thing. Uh, uh, you know, with you go from capital, uh, which the county pays for, to operating, which uh, is, it comes out of the operating budget, and it's, you know, it should be all part of the same. Yeah, I, I don't know the history and how it got to be where it is, but it is in in capital. Um, and I believe that we are probably um, going to need to leave it there. Well, uh, I, I said the same thing. I thought it was operating. I, came, I thought you said it was operating. Initially, initially, the renewal, the well, license, and that—that that is operating. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand now. Excuse me. I'm any new. any initial adoption, <laughs> like the Spark PE that I just brought forward, that's an initial adoption. That'll be capital, but in outlier years, um, it'll be back to operating. I'm learning. <laughs> Do I have a motion to accept the contract for Power School Performance Matters? Uh, fiscal impact of $71,587.53. Budget source of the FY 2021 operating budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, do, uh, do you have any questions or comments on that motion, Mr. Paluski? Thank you, Ms. Harper. Um, this contract that is up for renewal, uh, this is an annual 
uh, contract that we have with PowerSchool. This is our data management system, our assessment system uh, that we're required to have, um, as well as from our local assessments and our accountability. Um, it is, is this a sole is, source? Or have we ever tried to RFP this, or to get any bids on this? I believe... Because uh, we de definitely need to... Well, the, the unique thing about it is, is so the sole no. source side. Well, that it integrates with our system. And I think that's a unique um, component of it. But we've had performance matters for um, uh, before I arrived. Um, so the advantage of that is everybody's very familiar with it. Um, and that's a significant advantage. Plus, we have to have a data management system. Plus, so. I think what we talked about that last year, too. And I think they haven't actually kind of gone up like they've got us locked in or anything. They've been pretty reasonable on the pricing, if I recall. And that was kind of like what made us all feel a little bit better um, to reinstate them. Could we maybe next year? I mean, how, what other districts? What other, other districts have? Much everybody. Every, pre pretty much everybody, almost in the state of Maryland, is performance matters. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a couple other vendors that are out there, but predominantly. So we would have to find out what their track record is with those other units. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would just be slightly nervous with with potentially moving in a different direction with. Because everybody's comfortable. Here's a here's a component, and remember, you, you think about doing anything new. You really gotta think through how much change people can take, and um, especially I, during I, COVID. I would I would highly recommend that we we, okay. we stay right this here. This is where they're just a question. I mean, this is Power School, right? I mean, this is well, Power School. You're right. Power School is kind of the, the company, which we have the grade book that's tied to that. Um, this that is on this is on the assessment side, so it houses all of our assessment data so when teachers go in they'll give an assessment they'll be able to look at those data results this is the whole system that allows that to happen okay anyway, i had to bring it up so this is the platform yes, yes. so any other questions or comments hearing none i call for the vote on the power school perform the contract approval for power school performance matters fiscal impact of seventy one thousand five hundred eighty seven dollars fifty three cents Budget source FY 2021 operating budget. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, do I have a motion to accept Agile Mind contract renewal? Fiscal impact of $87,239.20. Budget source operating FY 2021 budget. Do I have a motion? I move. I have a second. Second for discussion. Question or comments? Discussion, Mr. Paluski. This is it, math department, the math department. It is it, okay. just similar to the ELA. So this is our, uh, our primary resource, uh, six and seven geometry and algebra two. Uh, we've had this now in place, I believe for about six years. Uh, this is just a renewal of that contract um, to be able to continue to provide that primary resource uh, to our classroom teachers and our students. And in this comment here, it says by renewing the contract, the contract for Agile Mind will continue to support high school geometry and algebra two as well as well as the middle schools sixth and seventh grade. So that's interesting. To be able to offer geometry at the sixth and seventh grade? No, no, it's it's just the platform for geometry. Although we do, I'd have to look at those numbers. Very few students would be taking geometry in in middle school. Uh, more. On that's what I was wondering. If the high school side. Just the high school. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? And, and just just to put it out there, the reason why we are doing these contracts now this is so that this is all in readiness for July 1st. That's why we are doing this now. No so dollars are spent yet. No dollars are spent. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept Agile Mine contract renewal. Fiscal impact of $87,239.20. Budget source of FY 2021 operating budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Polinski. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Pister. Yes, ma'am. 
uh, informational items, expenditure reports. Yes, ma'am. So before you is our standard monthly um, expenditure report. Um, I do not have a, a, a transfer request to go along with this at this point. There's just so many moving parts with COVID and um, what school's gonna look like and the possible of CARES funds uh, funding and what we're gonna use those funds for. We'll be bringing you um, at the next meeting uh, kind of a categorical cleanup of all of these things. Um, um, to kind of you know right the wrong on, on some of these negative accounts. Uh, last month, you had asked for two specific uh, explanations under mid-level administration, the contracted services line that had a negative $7,862. What that is, is that's our school funds online program, our school checking account. Um, it really needed to be coded here in the past. It's been coded somewhere else. So when we went and paid the bill this year, I coded it properly by what state law and, and the Maryland Financial Reporting Manual asks us to do. So that's why it's a negative Remind there. Remind me where that is, sir, I can't. Um, on the detail report, category. page one, category mid-level administration contracted services. If you go to the far right, there's a negative $7,862. Thank you. You coded it there. Does yes. It, 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 or it's so so we've, we've had this program for years, yeah. but when we went to, to uh, pay the bill this year, I realized that it was miscoded into a different category. It needs to be here because it's supporting the schoolhouse and that's what mid-level administration does, it supports the schoolhouse. So we charged it appropriately, you know, it eliminates any audit or legislative audit re requirement. So it's just charged here, it just was un un wasn't unbudgeted. The budget is sitting in another category and this will all be cleaned up when we do our categorical transfer at the end of this okay. month. But where was it all those? In operations. Okay. Mm. The other one that you had asked me was the furniture and equipment a little bit further down in category five, where we were over by $3,790. And again, that's really an offset just from the line above. Um, we had some network, large network switches, uh, basically infrastructure for the network that uh, needed to be added to our fixed asset inventory um, that was a required replacement. So again, as when we do the categorical transfer, that will simply just go away, but it was a necessary item and it had to be coded as equipment to include in our fixed asset inventory for financial statement purposes. So when did that show up in operating? I'm sorry? Showed up in operating? Yes, it's an operating expense, it's ongoing. It's a recurring yeah. cost. So I see we're at 95.69% of the budget. Yes. So we should be. We, we should be. We should be fine. There's some other things that are going on, like I said, with transportation, you know, we knew we were gonna have a large you know, deficit there, um, the, the work with the bus contractors you know, and some other things that have been going on it, it, that we're still incurring, not we're still incurring costs, we're still recovering from those huge overtime and, and homeless transportation needs and things like that. So you can see that's still a negative $98,000 by category, but we'll offset some, some funds from some of the other areas to help make that um, back into the balance. Um, and then the same thing with health services, there's a little bit of over expenditure there, but we'll clean all that up when we go through the final review. So at the next work session in yes. two weeks, yes. we will be doing budget. Yes. We'll be going through the budget line items and then. And then we'll have a categorical up. transfer for this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what we, we, were, we were asking what kind of money we've been saving by not having kids in school. Yeah, we had asked that last. So with like bus contractors, there's a little over $100,000 uh, substitutes. Um, about $120,000. Um, most of our employees are still getting paid with the exception of some temporary uh, employees. And a lot of those costs are still continuing. We've had a slight little reduction in utility costs, um, but um, you know, repairs and maintenance and things like that are still ongoing. No, but where is that money going? You just said the substitutes and then there was- the So that's sitting in here as part of some of the balance that we have remaining and we will look at that. That's but what you're gonna use to- to help offset a transportation overage or something like that. Yes, ma'am. And of course, we always have had the special ed all year, remember, you know, with the non-public placement. So we'll need to move money into that category. We did get that question from the commissioners, right? How much yes. extra We did have that question spent? from the commissioners. No, we're, we're how much they wanted, they wanted was, to know. And we, and we provided that. I, they, 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 they seem to have, think that we are saving two to three million dollars no. since March 13th. I just want to make sure that that's not the case. 86% 80, of our, our budget is employees. And when you continue to pay your employees, you're still going to continue to incur those costs. Correct. You provided them information? That's on provided the to the, the board. Uh, what are oh, expected? I thought you just said you provided it to the commission. I'm sorry, I was referring to the board. Oh, okay. No, she said, he said it to us mm -hmm. because I did have that question. When we were there, they asked we us. Mm -hmm. Answer that or we're mm -hmm. going to answer that. How would we be we would be paying them if they were working. 
So how would that affect the budget in any way, shape, or form? Because if they were here working or not here, being paid, they're being paid both times. Yeah, it's not, it's not impacting. When we okay. continue to pay our full-time yeah, employees, it's not impacting the budget. So, so that's unlike uh, changes in certain contracts, mm -hmm. which added to the cost. Mm -hmm. And we've, we're, we're almost at $110,000 in COVID supplies alone. So, you know, that we have to take into account. And that's not reflected in this because I have it set off in a separate restricted fund so that, so that we can account for those. Mm -hmm. So that's not even reflected in here that we will, depending on where we decide to fund those from, either CARES fund or operating budget leftover or something like that, will be an offset to some of these costs as we well. We have to worry about those costs come... September if we do Absolutely. get back into the yeah. schools. Yeah. But just what we've done since March is 110. If you extrapolate that across a 12-month school year or even 10-month school year, that's expensive. So are we pay, going to pay for that with CARES, or we're going to vote on how we pay for that, right? With the, the we, we have a plan that's due to MSDE on the potential for how we will spend the CARES fund. Um, most likely some of this is not eligible for CARES funds, some of it is, and then there's always the option that we've been told no of requests through the county funds for the funds that they have. So we're on our own with, with, with that. It's possible that some of this could be funded with CARES funds, but that plan's yet to be developed yet. Okay. And we're working on that, that's due June 12th, I believe. Okay, are you, you gonna provide that to us? Cause I'd like to know, that's a lot of money. Where the, yeah. The one we question we can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one question I had, and I guess I think you just blow, blew a hole in my theory, in category 10, and this is your more detailed part, five, on 5,000, we have a great surplus there, but I, that's where you coded something wrong, am I correct? No, so the, the well, what has happened is um, we've had some issues with the, the provider of our um, solar fields to get us an accurate accounting of what's going on there. There's, and we just resolved this within the last two days. So you'll see that number go down by almost two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. At six hundred twenty-seven thousand. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. To pay for my, the cause, cause to pay for the solar field, they 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 couldn't provide us with the information we need to account for it properly because of the um, the way we report. So we just got that resolved within the last two days. That number will go down. But exactly. again, because of the mild winter and because of schools being closed these, since March 13th, we are seeing some savings there that we will use, but we will not be able to use that entire 600. Well, we will use, but if that operation saved it, I'm wondering if that, op that money could be also, since we did capital for some of these ovens and refrigeration stuff on a one-time cost. Could it was be. saved in that area. And to me, if you save it in, in, in the operation, then let's put it in operation. And we know we have oven costs and we have refrigeration costs. That'd be a good one-time cost for some of that money. Yes, sir. Is this a bad time to ask, how come we're paying for the solar field? No, oh, it's, it's the, the Tesla invoices that, that came in, coding it to the correct school. They had them mixed up at going to each school. The, the bills have already been in just coding it to the proper school to what the accounting firm has to do. Mm -hmm. um, but no, there's no problem with the solar fields. Or okay. we're, we're paying for the electric that the solar field is generating. Yes, for the people, yes. That's still at 21 cents a, a unit, or is it 27 cents? Uh, six and a half cents per kilowatt. Oh, I thought it had gone up on that. No. But okay, you said we pay six the, and no, no uh, service charge. No Six line and a half cents. You're always going to have to pay a half a cent or a cent to Delmar with power no matter what. Right. Correct. So you're looking at seven and a half cents. We're currently paying right now um, for our supply and distribution at a regular functioning school about 11, about right. 11 cents. And you're, okay. home, you're paying about 15. Yes. And we're on year, what on that contract? Because that was the first time I was on the board that we we're signed on, that contract. Uh, year two of that. It's a 20, uh, year, two. 20 year per The 216? You're probably thinking of Graysonville Elementary School. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. That, that, was, was, that was in 2015, 2016. Like the Queen Anne's County is, there's no escalator. It's a lot. Okay, okay. Six and a half cents for 20 years, no escalation. Okay, so you all did that before I got here in 2018. Okay, that's why I didn't know about it. Thank you. Any other questions, comments to Mr. Uh, uh, John, when you come up with a loose end, uh, could you identify how much more was paid for transportation than it needed to be. But we extended some contracts and did some things, paid them. Yes, I can get those costs for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we can see how much that is. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right, thank you all very much.
And the transfer notice, there's none Tran this month. No, there is. Tran so the transfer okay. notice, um, again, within category cleanup, um, because of the school psychologist situation and not having the FTEs, as you know, we uh, applied and, and um, brought to this board contracts that we're doing some of our school psychology services contracted. So again, just again, part of the end of the year, there's $150,000 transfer from within the same inst instructional category from salaries and wages to contracted services for $150,000 because we were not able to hire school psychologists. We had to go out and contract those. So well, the money's budgeted in salaries. We had to spend it in contracted and that's what you're, okay. you're seeing the what transfer. What has the psychologist done since the middle of March? Do they get paid for doing something or I believe they're still engaging with students, Dr. They King. are still engaging with students vir virtually. Mm -hmm. Okay. And but this is for the entire this. year. And we may have to do this again. And we may have yes. to. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's, that's a placeholder we're keeping for the FY. So, so we will main, we, we, as long as we have the positions in the budget, we will budget for those positions. If at some point we decide that we want to fully contract out, Okay. which I don't know if that would be the direction that we would want to go, but the, the budget transfer process allows us to do that. So we would still maintain the FTEs in our budget because we would want to hire FTEs, yes. but when we can't, then the contract is something that we can fall back on. Okay. But that's the salaries, what we had put in there in case we had a full-time person. Correct. Yes. Okay. Some of the, some of the savings, yes, ma'am. That's why mm -hmm. it came out of that. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. The school psychologists are involved in the IEP process Correct. as well. Yep. And those meetings are still happening. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. They're still oh, yeah. in contact I with the students. Oh, yeah. are still happening. Okay. okay. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. We are yes, at um, future school board meetings. June 17th is the work session where we should be finalizing a budget. Did you, want to, did you have any other things for public comment? Or? Oh, public comment is down here at 9 o'clock. It's future school board and then public comment. That's what's on this okay. page. All right. It just reads differently on board. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I got, I got public comment before July that. 10th instead of <clears throat> Our school board meet is July 1st. Right. And then, and then the work session is July 15th. But we're meeting again in June. 2019, sorry. But we're going to meet in June now. Okay, I was pulling up my calendar now. I'm sorry. June, yeah, June seventeenth is the school is the work session. No, 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 we get the, uh, never mind. Sorry. We may have to schedule another work session if we do not finalize the budget by the seventeenth. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is quite possible. Mm -hmm. Just you know, keep that out there. Any anybody who has free dates? The seventeenth. That's all we're going to be working on, probably. Well, right. we may have to have another one just in case to <coughs> finalize the budget. We have to have it done before July first. Right. I was going to say that's all we have down for June seventeenth. I'm mostly off. Or did we have other things? I don't know. No, I don't know. Right. At this point, at this point, this is what we have. Um, public comment, citizen participation. This is right. Do we have anything else added? No one has sent in anything. No one has sent anything. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd, I'd like to uh, make a motion to go into executive closed session. Mr. Jeff, we will close out of the entire meeting at the end of a clo executive closed session. So do I have a motion to go into executive closed session? I move pursuit to general policies of Article 3-305 that the Board of Education of Queens County for the board meet in closed session to discuss the point employment assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials of whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consider matters directly related to negotiating strategy, or the contents of a contract. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to motion to go into executive closed session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much for attending. Have a good evening. <laughs>